Hello and welcome back, friends, fellow citizens of the Ice Court, fellow sleigh riders. I, you know what? That last episode left a bit of a sour taste in my mouth. I don't like leaving off, letting my enemies have got the better of me, and I was kind of forced to. And uh, I'm, not, I'm not thrilled about that. We started the recruitment process so we can reincarnate Slayler Swift. And this will be Slayler Swift 2.0. And, um, you know, of course, it's going to come with even more vengeance. So we will get such vengeance. We do need to start rebuilding the army that Boris is supposed to have. But now, back in Kislev, we will be able to do this relatively easy. And we are going to rebuild it um, in force with some extremely potent units. And never again will Boris have trouble cutting his way through the forces of chaos. Um, so this should be a lot of fun. I'm going to go ahead and start recruiting Zargard. And I think I'm going to do like a mixture of Zargard. Some with shields, some without. Just that way we get a little bit of staying power against missiles. But we also have some anti-infantry uh, power. And we'll, we'll get started there with that uh, Druzina Lord. Now, of course, that is going to be very expensive upkeep. Boris would have had the upkeep cost reduction. Um... Sorry, I had a phone call come in, so if you see the cut there, and I stopped talking and went on to something else, that's why. But we were building the new army, and let's head over. Mother of Stankia might be able to help us get some vengeance here soon, though we need to finish this, this building first. However, probably no reason why we can't come up here and wreck the settlement in the meantime, uh, before we're able to get her Akshina ambushers added to her army. And again, we can't make her army like a complete uh, Mother of Stankia type army they because be we're not gonna have access to spiders. I, um, I don't think you have a way to start recruiting all that stuff. If you do, and I just don't remember, then let me know in the comments and I will do my best to take care of that. All right, I'm gonna start trying to build there. We have started Time our recruitment. Boris is gonna be unavailable for how many turns? Three turns, so it's not that long before we get him back. And he'll reduce the cost of the upkeep there as well, which should be good. We lost our Ottoman um, because of the attack on Prague. I'm honestly thinking about just waiting until I retake it, and I'll put one back there. Uh, so we should be okay. I'm going to retake it and My see what we do, but uh, we'll ignore that for now. I mean, unless there's another event there is not yeah so i'm gonna ignore that particular notification Only I keep not worried about outpost right now and let's go ahead and end our turn i want to get some sweet revenge on archaeon i think zarina katarin possesses the strength of army to do it she's got five sleds her own sled is extremely good against infantry i have a lot of missiles to use against archaeon if he gets stuck into melee with us, though... Okay, he ran off. Um, if he gets stuck into melee with us, that is going to be problematic. That is weird. Why did he run off? I guess he saw our ambush and took off running. And he's somehow gotten almost all of his troops back already, too. But I... I wish I could say I understood the logic behind the AI decision-making here. Maybe they know they just don't have enough to go and overtake... Kislev, but at the same time, like, why do you just roll out of there? The shield of Look at the that. Old Takes all my sleds down to two. It is mine so stupid. Right. So stupid. CA, fix this crap. All right, um, anyway, we've got Zarina Katarin in there, and now she might die, because Wintertooth could double back with Archaeon and, like, just all siege me. So this may end up being air falling to Archaeon's antics twice in a row in a magnificently stupid fashion. We, we will see. Um, let's see. What is... We can recruit Axina ambushers now. We can also get additional hag units. Which, I don't think we need additional hag units because we have the Frost Queen. But that means we could potentially send hags into other armies, like into the army with Boris, for instance. Uh, that could be potentially quite good. How I think what I'm going to do, I mean, Kislevite warriors are cool and all, but I'm going to disband some of these lighter troops, and we're just going to replace them all with Akshina ambushers. Akshina ambushers got nerfed quite a bit, so they're not nearly as powerful as they used to be in a melee, um, which is unfortunate. 
but they are still very good damage dealers from range, and damage dealing is going to be kind of our bread and butter with these armies. I actually think I'm going to cut that one short and put in an extra sled. And yeah, we'll go with that for now um, in Mother Stanka's army. At your peril. We did get another. Let's do this Vengeance of Spirits. Yeah, that direct damage one will be helpful. Help okay, and then appreciated. I can't increase any healing, so I'm going to just start spending it on other stuff with him at the moment. Let's head back over here. Wants us to make improvements at Nagenhof. Um which I guess we could, but I'm actually a little more worried about Fort Obersteyr. It's kind of still on the line of fire. Let's go ahead and increase the defenses at Fort Obersteyr. Schwarzhofen can soon be better defended as well. So I want to increase my st defenses to the south um, as we get the opportunity. We finished our technology work, which is good. And let's see what else we can do here. Bear baiting is, is one that I feel like I have to research just because I use the term bear baiting all the time. So use this we're, we're going to uh, research the bear baiting. We do have, let's see, we want to pick a ice maiden. We're going to start that process. And we should be able to put our ottoman back, or ottoman, whatever you say there. Sounds like I'm saying ottoman like the... Ottoman Empire. Whoops, I accidentally just clicked someone in there and now I can't undo it, so it looks like he has better effect on control and growth, which eh, yeah, those things aren't bad. So, there could be worse things, probably. Let's re I don't have the money to rebuild the defenses here. We might want Defender to consider rebuilding the defenses there. Which means we could cut that recruitment since it's not doing anything right now anyway. And let's begin rebuilding the defenses. It'll only take one turn, so they all need to double back to prevent me from finishing those defenses, and they might very well do that. It is a very real possibility. Um, local recruitment's not going to do me much good. Let's end our turn again, and let's see whether they all come back and attack Zarina Katarin. I It could be the smart move to make here, because she's missing sleds. Uh, military alliance... Seems feasible, but at the same... Well, yeah, I mean, might as well. I think we already have the defensive alliance. What is our Kaon gonna do? I think they should double back and attack me because I'm missing the sled units. But then again, like I said, the AI is somewhat perplexing to me in terms of how and why they make their decisions. So I get why they destroyed Prague, because they felt like they could. But at the same time, like, okay, you destroyed it, now what? Did they just come back and siege me? I think they did. Yes, they did siege me, Mistress of ice. but I'm not going to take much attrition, and it's going to take them 22 turns of to complete warriors. the siege. Now, I cannot reach them on this next turn. They could attack me, Follow and Ar Archaeon's there, and so Zarina Katarin could end up in a in a very Chosen desperate defense Rusina. situation. I'm kind of... If I move up this force to support, though, I don't know if we can I come out on open you. ground. I'm going to do a quick autosave here just to kind of see what happens. But I'm going to take this force. Of the land. I think they're still just slightly this out of reinforcement range. Yeah, they're just slightly out of reinforcement range. It still says we could win. Let's decline the attack for now. Let's move up these forces just a little bit closer Noble with the Druzina. If I do a force march. Move out. Now I do get those forces. They'll be tired upon coming into battle. Um, like I said, annoyingly, I'm going to be missing some sled entities because of CA's nonsense that they've still not fixed, even as the most recent hot fix. So apparently, I don't know if it's even on their radar. I'll make sure and mention it to them again. Um, in fact, let me take a picture of this. Another picture. I've got the other picture of it, plus the video that I'll share with them. So I'm going to go try and share that with them. Let's go out on the battlefield and let's kill Frog. All right, the battle started. I'm going to target Little Grom onto some of the Femir Warriors. Those are high-value targets. I'm going to take these reinforcing garrison units, and I wanted to withdraw them from the battle, but apparently I can't, um, which seems stupid, which means they're going to prevent me from getting more um, reinforcements because you can only have so many units on the battlefield at the same time, so I'm going to actually just have to bring them forward and send them to their death. But so be it, I guess. Um, this is interesting. The AI is kind of sending some of their forces out after me. I might use Zarina Katarin. I'm going to kind of cheese them a little here. 
I'm gonna send her in and start busting up their infantry. See if I can force the rest of their force the rest of their units to react, essentially. Because she will not cause non-substantial damage to that infantry. It'll be quite substantial. Did we kill any of the Femir Warriors? We did not. We just did a lot of damage to them. So we need little Grum to start dropping some of those Femir Warriors. And I'm going to continue to just be a massive... New that killed a Femir... Well, wow, it didn't. I guess we're just bouncing cannonballs off of the chest of Femir Warriors. So those guys are impressive. They can take a cannon shot and not die. Okay, that's definitely got their attention, I believe. So I'm going to bring these units back some. And I've got those cheap garrison units coming up, and I'll use them to kind of just body block for a moment. And then that way they die, and I'll be able to bring in more of my reinforcing troops as well. I'm going to turn an ice guard units each out to the flank to kill those stupid marauder horsemen who are rolling into my flanks. And let's see what see what old Grom's got cooking here. He's killed a couple of the Femir warriors at this point. I'm going to target the next unit of Femir warriors. Here comes old Throgster as well. I'm going to run behind my main line. My ice guard will massacre these Marauder Horsemen, and if they come into melee, they will also massacre the Marauder Horsemen. The Buy Our Blood ability out here should be pretty handy. I'm going to start focusing fire on Throg. And then let's use Zarina Katarin as a major nuisance character here. Uh, in fact, I should be able to hit these guys with the Frozen Heart of Winter. And that target those Norse controls. Yep, Throg is getting is getting manhandled right now. And I'm gonna slow all these units even further. That frozen heart of winter really causing some damage there. Throg is going down in a big hurry. His forces are taking extreme damage. And we massacred those units that were threatening our flanks. And I can move in my reinforcements now. Okay, and we drove off the trolls. I'm going to bring my sleds to bear here. Again, no pun intended, but I guess pun now intended. Zarina Katarin's racked up a hundred and something kills here. I don't know if it's from the Frozen Heart of Winter or just the sled rampage. But um, Throg's reinforcements are on the way, but Throg himself is already dead. And Zarina Katarin is just racking up kills obnoxiously large numbers of kills now i'm not upset about it being obnoxious either i might add they have got a unit of Famir warriors over here that needs to be dead and then i'd like to reposition my forces a little bit let's um grab my sleds and then the patriarch i would have thought the Famir warriors would have died a little more quickly Norse control. Okay, they've got some infantry coming back from running. Let's take little Grom as well. Where is little Gromsky? Right here. Let's bring him up on this hill so he can open fire on the inbound troops. And then I need to take these units here and kind of turn them to face incoming forces. Some of my sleds just took some nasty damage there from... This should be in group one. All right, let's bring group one back here. I'm going to do a little bit of healing. And my Daz's Hearthblades got a little bit cooked. I'm going to stick a unit out in front of them to kind of give them blocking. And I've got my Ice Guards nearby. Deal with them. I wish we could get more ammunition on these Ice Guards. I might look for some tech. See whether or not we can do any ammunition increases on Ice Guard. I feel like they're out of ammo rather quickly here. Not to say that they weren't effective with their ammunition. They certainly were. Boydenov's Brawlers here. I think the Druzina can add ammunition. But I won't have a Druzina in this army, obviously. Let's bring this Zargard up here in front of these units that are now out of ammunition. And then Daza's Hearth Blades being attacked by this Marauder Champions. Those are some tough units. Let's go help them finish him off more quickly. 
And I'm going to have a little fun here. I finish that unit off. I'm going to bring Zarina Katarin up front. I'm going to summon the magic cat here in a minute. And use it to disrupt the enemy force. Oh, by the way, I need to get these sleds. Here. Here. Let's get all the sleds together. And then let's get the Golden Knight out of the way, because she does not need to heal at the moment. Let's go intercept these Ice Wolves. I don't think the Ice Wolves are large characters. Bring my Boyar out here, and then let's go ahead and pop a heal off of... Let's see how much we can... I can't heal my sleds a lot, but we can heal them a little. Let's go after that Marauder Chieftain who's fighting our Boyar. And then... Yeah, our Boydenov's Brawlers ought to have plenty of targets. Start targeting over here, Golden Knight. Let's send the Patriarch up into this fight now, and then my sleds are as healed as my sleds are going to get for this fight. Let's drop this over here so those guys can't. Need to bring Zarina Katarin back over here, and there's a juicy blob for a frozen heart of winter here juicy juicy blob all right all those extra zargard were in place we never did get the frozen heart of winter on station but i can pursue this group that's routing and inflict additional casualties into these Norskin forces here. Wherever, uh, where, oh, Grom was aimed a different direction. Whoops. Bit of a mistake on my part. Okay, let's start giving attack orders here. And I'm just gonna start following up with routing troops here. Same thing with Zarina Katarin. Alright, we're gonna do some follow-on attacks here and go for maximum damage output. I'm going to actually send Zarina Katarin after the Chieftain. She's having trouble getting moving here because there's so many units kind of plowing over the top of each other. You all come over here. All right, there we go. Send the Patriarch over here after those. All right, so we're going to do some damage to the routing troops. Hopefully a significant amount of damage. I'm going to fast forward a minute. Let that damage be done. That's a Marauder Great Weapon. Okay, I was wondering if it was Marauder Champion. Just a Marauder Great Weapon, but still worth killing off some of these troops on their way up the battlefield, getting rid of their Lord there in, in maximum casualty infliction here. So that should be good. All right, very good damage done there. And that is going to push back Wintertooth and probably make our Kaon think twice before he swings back this direction because I do have reinforcements still, though I need to be doing more recruiting. So I need to just get this settlement in a position to defend itself. And as soon as I re repair some of the damage done to our sleds and stuff here, we should be, we should be in a good position. Let's take a look at... Um, some of the upgrades here. We got Heart of Winter. Did we... So we got Skilled Craftsmen. Firing Drills does not impact Ice Guards, which is unfortunate. Best of the Court is probably where that would come into play. Which improves the Missile Strength for Ice Guards. It's not bad. Embodiment of Winter. Con Queen. Frost Affinity. And Dom. So melee defense for ice guard units. Let's go ahead and do that because we have a lot of ice guard units. And then we might want to go ahead and throw best of the court, which would then be giving us a plus 14 melee defense for Zargard units. I don't like this upgrade here. Like, I guess it gives attack to Zargards, defense to Zar and ice guards, and then missile strength to ice guards. Eh, I mean, it's okay. Um, it'd be nice to have a little bit better buff coming to ice guard and Zarina Katarin's army, but I mean, it's not the end of the world. Um... Definitely not the end of the world. Let's see. A glorious day for Kislev. Punish troops. And I think I'm going to go with Wild-Eyed and then probably Inviolable. With our Golden Knight. 
What do we have here? Seed saying. Glory be to so the mother speed for Zargard and Ice Guards. There we go. Melee attack and weapon strength for Ice Guards. Now that is pretty cool. That is good stuff right there. And then what else do we have in here? So armor and melee defense and yielding kinsmanship. Missile resistance would be handy because um, that's for all units in the hero army. So there's some some good stuff still here to be had from the, the Golden Knight. So I think what we want to do is unlock March of the Tsarina and let's go to learn from the best. Is it? No. Let's go to Unmatched in the Oblast. There we go. And then let's go check our tech tree too. I was working on bear baiting. I know there's a couple of improvements. Yep, ammunition plus 10% for... Let's switch to that one real quick. Born in Prague. Ammunition plus 15%. That does not say during siege. Because see, the other one says when under siege. When under siege. This just says ammunition plus 15%. Is that across the board? I don't know. It looks like it is. Your Tsarina looks after you. Regardless, I feel like... That helps get us in a bit of a better place. Weapon strength for infantry, a cavalry focused. Um, she's going to be in Boris's army. I still think this is more handy, even though we're going to have a lot of cavalry in his army. Charge bonus plus 10%, it's not that big of a deal. Let's stick with infantry. Um, that little bit of weapon strength, I think, goes further Drusina. for the infantry than it does for the, the other direction. Drusina's going to start leveling up. Um... We'll just start doing... We should probably do Leader of Renown, because we're going to be spending a lot on recruitment costs. So that might save us some good money across there. So, let's see. Garrison Lord not moved, nor do I intend to move uh, on that turn in. So we can skip that. And we have a considerable amount of money. Let's go look at some of our Sylvanian holdings and see whether or not there's anything appropriate to upgrade this turn. I don't think so. Though. Well, we could, we could upgrade Castle Drakenhof. It's an expensive upgrade, but one that might pay off. I think we should make this upgrade here too. Actually, we should upgrade the defenses first. We'll do that. So we are busy putting some new units into Mother Ostankia's army. So her army will be substantially stronger now as well. Um, and if we get the upgrades to the ambushers, which I believe she has access to, Kevin's will, fortress. No, she does not have the direct access to him, but we do have firing drills, which is going to impact the ambushers fairly substantially. So we will upgrade them there. Wildlings. That one's going to give physical resistance, so we don't have all those units. It's too bad we can't recruit those units because we're Mother Ostankia. I don't know. Maybe there's a way to do that. Maybe there's a mod for doing it that I should have looked into. I think it'd be neat to be able to have those spider units and stuff if you take on Mother Ostankia into your faction. But I can understand why they don't just add those units, because just flat out adding spiders to the rosters um, would be insane. But to that being said, in Mother Ostankia's campaign, as soon as you take control of one of the big Oblasts, then you're able to to get the regular Gospodar troops. And so I feel like the that there should be a flip side of that, right? Where we're able to take control and get the, what is it, Ungol units or whatever they call them? I may have the wrong naming for it. All right, we do want that non-aggression pact with... Kara's a crack. That makes makes a lot of sense. And we're going to rebuild that army. I need to move it back into Kislev territory to continue recruiting. And then we'll have Tsarina Katarin hold Prague. I think we just picked up the first garrison level at Prague. We did. We still have the forces of chaos kind of meandering about. Um, what do we have here in terms of, Okay, we already got a decent defense stood up. Of and Zarina Katarin's army is no joke. Defy chaos. So let's the see if we can rebuild Prague at all here. And then let's get this army Respect back to work recruiting. We want bear riders because that's going to be an integral part of Boris's army. So I feel like we should have several bear riders and then several bear sleds. 
And then maybe a couple of like Ice Guard Glaives or something. Or actually some little Grom action would be important here too to give him some range. So we'll keep working on that. We have our Ice Court event here. So we get Scourge of the Corrupt or Court Controller. Neither one of these is very exciting to be honest. I would have rather had other things pop up. Um, okay, here's a large army for a Kaon. We are certainly well equipped to fight it at this point. It says we're going to take Chaos Attrition, which makes sense. I'm kind of thinking I might take that Attrition and just go ahead and see if I can get up here close enough to destroy that army. A little bit of risk there, but I feel like it'll be worth it. it takes so long to build everything here. I'm going to go ahead and get the building started. Um, we'll see whether we can get this this province kind of under control. Let's go ahead and build some defenses at Essen. Actually don't have the money, so we'll have to do it on the next turn. Building upgrades available. We'll skip that because we're already running fairly low on money. There we go. All right, so we're able to... I, I noticed that a lot of those folks decided to stay out of my land while the, the invocation of Ursin was under effect. So we'll have to make sure we continue to use those invocations. Uh, to our advantage. That one was definitely a worthwhile invocation because if they had stood around in my lands, they would have started to suffer attrition. They want me to join the war against the Barrow Legion. I just don't see why I need to join the war against the Barrow Legion. I don't have the forces to march halfway across the map and assist you with destroying the Barrow Legion. Okay, so this is expected. They're going to hit my little settlement here. Did they see my army and... I think they did see it, and they tried to run away, which is, again, expected. The question is whether or not they could get far enough away. They probably saw my army. Yep, they did. Which is why they ran away so hard afterwards. But see, they're on a force march, and it, it's going to work. They force marched away to, to get outside of my range, so they, they will get to live for at least a couple of turns. I'm going to go ahead and replenish here. But uh, they nearly were taught a valuable lesson there, but unfortunately not quite. So our Kaon's troops are going to have to watch it. As soon as I replenish my, my folks there, they're going to be in trouble. Zarina Katarin can't catch this army here. There's a plague at Prague, which is great. It comes from these losers. I don't know if her army is plaguing, but if not, they probably will be soon. And that's going to depend on what kind of plague. But I can lay an ambush here and see whether... We can lure our can. Are they fighting the Skaven? No, they're raiding my territory. Look at that. They're raiding my territory. <laughs> but they're like hiding way up in the corner. He's like, yeah, we're going to raid you, but don't really want to be anywhere close to you. So let's go park over here in the corner. <laughs> Astrogoth is trespassing. That's to be understood. I Maybe I should have finished him off and taught him a lesson. Let's tell him to get out of our territory, so I'm going to issue him a trespass warning. An old woman. And if he goes ahead and makes us declare war, I'll, I'll turn around and come finish him. Uh, we gave him a chance. We, we gave him a chance to, to continue living, but that doesn't mean that I have to continue to take that chance. That's got five turns remaining, so let's let it, let's let it go for now. Okay, um, and then I, I think there were some defenses down here that I wanted to build. Was it here? Yes, it was here at Essen. So let's put some defense in at Essen. Again, we have a little bit of money available to us. Do I need it at Prague? I do not. I do not need it in the recruiting process right now. And speaking of recruiting, our, we are about to take some big hits to our income as we finish some recruiting there but like this province for instance I don't really need the growth particularly bad anymore we could tear that down and put in some extra income and if I build Zavastra we have room for extra income there as well so I can try and offset some of this recruiting that's being done let's go to our ice court thing ice chariot here so upkeep cost reduction for war sleds or for little groms. Let's do for the war sleds because we're going to have more of that than little grom. And then worst comrades to recruit rank. We're not recruiting anything. We are going to have to deal with a lot of chaos corruption. 
we may recruit stuff there eventually. I mean, this is a tricky one for me, so I think I'm just going to go with that one because, again, I may recruit stuff there eventually, and the extra recruiting chevronage could be handy. Hard to say. We can get our king conduit here now, so that's fantastic. And then our buildings available. Let's go ahead and ignore that for now and end yet another turn here. So we got our revenge, at least temporarily, on our Kaon. We took Prague back. We haven't really exacted revenge on the Ever Chosen. And Astrogoth is working hard to distract us from potential revenge as well. We probably ought to just go kill him. Because he's going to backstab us at the worst moment whenever we're trying to work against our Kaon. Let's see whether our little ambush plan with Tsarina Katarin lured anybody close enough for a battle. It hasn't yet, but our Kaon is within striking distance and he gets reinforced. Um, if I hit him, he might run. But I'm going to have 43% of my movement left if I do hit him, so I don't know how far he can run. But that could leave me within striking distance of Clan Mulder, too. But I feel f pretty confident that we can get our revenge on our Kaon right here, right now. I don't know. He may have... Yeah, he fled a long ways after we hit him. I do think we can't catch him on this turn. So that is frustrating. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to go back into an ambush stance and kind of just waltz back down here a little closer. We've lured these guys in. Prog's got enough garrison that I don't think they're an immediate threat to him. They might be. But I'm still nearby with Zarina Katarin, so if a few things happen to Prague, it's not the end of the world. Uh, is Boris back yet? He should be. So, Druzina Ice Cube will be back once we get the next army ready, but let's replace him at the moment with Boris, because we're trying to put Boris's army back together. Plus, he gets a better upkeep cost reduction on these units, so it only makes sense at that point. We're going to put some heavy sleds in here. Kind of thinking like two Groms. And then some Ice Guard Glaives. And I think this army will be great for Boris. It'll be focused to Zargard, Bear Riders, Bear Sleds, Grom. And then the Glaive Ice Guards give us a little bit of anti-large capability. So I think that'll be a perfect force for him. And his army will now be incredibly dangerous. Which is what we want. I do not wish for his army to be anything less than incredibly dangerous. Okay, is there anything else we can do for cash in these parts? I mean, I could build this, but that's it's only a minor cash boost. What else? What else? What else? Uh, I guess Astrogoth took our warning to heart because he backed off. He backed off in a big hurry. Correct. Okay, so there is... Either way we go, there are many enemies ahead of us here. And we're going to get pulled one direction or the other, and then they're just going to come falling in behind us. I could certainly hurt Wintertooth really bad, though, if I came through in this direction. It would leave their, these lands temporarily vulnerable. I'm going to move out of here. The land calls to me there. And Nakari is back here, Despite interesting us. enough. Kislev, we will ambush. A I'm going to risk a little bit of attrition here to see if we can lure Nakari into an ambush. And let's go ahead and end our turn and just kind of collect some more money here as well. Got a recruiting continuing. Zarina Katarin's waiting for opportunities. Let's just see what we can drum up here. I want to fight some battles, but the AI is playing scaredy cat here and basically avoiding engagements with me because now they don't want to fight me now that my armies are substantially more powerful they're suddenly much less interested in fighting me directly and they want to just move around me and try and get to my settlements so they have definitely changed their oh our chaos closer to us and i don't know if he can get away this time our army hasn't been discovered yet at this point either did Prague get hit? No, Prague finished upgrading. I was like, did it just get hit again? No, it finished upgrading. And I can further add to their defenses. 
I don't think our Kaon can get away at this point. He's got a Plague now, too, so we're likely going to end up with Plague if we kill him. He retreats all the way into Skaven territory. All right, I don't know if anybody's ever wondered about my deployment here, but at least for this particular battle, and with many, what my hope here is, like, I have a little bit of active reserve here with the Hearth Blades in the back. I've got the Boydenov's Brawlers sitting right next to Little Grom. The idea of why I put these units farther back, some people might be like, Air, your line of sight's going to be blocked. Not two monsters. And so in my opinion, Boydenov's Brawlers give me that, um, that ability to cut down monsters from behind the line, but they don't have an easy way to disrupt the Brawlers. Immediately behind my infantry line is my Ice Guard, uh, standard Ice Guard, the kind with the swords. And these dual sword ones are good against infantry. And the fact that they back up my main line is purposeful in the sense that they are likely to be in an infantry fight, whereas my Ice Guard with Glaives are going to be standing uh, out here on my flank. Uh, in fact, I need to fix this here real quick. So the Ice Guard Glaives are going to be out towards my flank, and I've got my Ice Guards there. So the idea is that they might run into large units on the flank. Same thing, the opposite flank is the Ice Guards. Uh, and then, of course, I have my Bear Baiting crew up front for the purposes which... I think you all understand at this point. So that is why I have deployed my army the way I did. Let's just straighten this up just a little bit here. Like that. Okay. Now I could put the hearth blades in the front line. AI loves to target those units though, and is likely to just send, you know, a YOLO squad there. And we're gonna take Grom and I'm gonna pick a big target like the giant back here. And we're gonna put some shots onto that giant. Archaeon looks like he wants to sit back. Again, no idea what drives that mindset. He doesn't have a ranged advantage. He doesn't have anything to push against me. He's just going to get shot in the face. Now, if he wants to stand back and get shot in the face, I am perfectly happy to oblige him being shot in the face. Uh, oh, just scored a good hit with Little Grom. Didn't do a lot, though. A little bit disappointing hit there. I might aim for these uh, Chaos Trolls instead. All right, my sleds are... Just inside a range here. They tagged up our Kaon just a little bit. I'm going to start pulling these units back in. The AI may decide to work towards my flank. So I'm going to turn my Ice Guard Glaives to face that direction. In fact, I'm going to send some Zargard that direction just to be ready to help support there. The shards here from Archaeon, the or whatever you want to call it, it's his metal magic that he's using on me. I'm gonna use Zarina Katarin with an ice sheet here to kind of just slow down everything in that vicinity. And then let's just kind of drive back some of these initial attacks. These Warhounds, I won't get a bonus versus large against them, but they're not gonna do well in those YOLO charges that they're bringing right down the center there. That's, that's not gonna end well. Our Kaon is kind of moving over to this flank. He wants my sleds. I'm going to pull him through my lines and refuse to let him melee my characters or my sleds. I'm going to try and get him bottled up in a blob. And we're going to start targeting monsters. No, don't move, don't move. See, and I'm going to use my guns to cut down these, these monsters trying to get through here. And then I'm going to turn my fire back into Archaeon, except a couple of my units had an attack order there. Let's take um, Serena Katarin. Maybe come back in this vicinity and help out a little there. Alright, now our sleds should be firing on our Kaon. While they are, let's take my heroes and start working our way up this flank. My Ice Guard Glaives, I would rather them not be in this fight at the moment, so I'm going to back them up a little bit. Train some Archer Fire on these key units. Train our Cannon Fire against those key units. And... Zarina Katarin's not doing much here yet. She does have Death Frost. Let's use that on our Kaon real quick. We're starting to lose a little bit of our infantry line right here in the middle. I'm going to reinforce that with some Ice Guards. I don't love them being in this melee like this. But they can be used for such. And I intend to at the moment. I was hoping that our Streltsy here would be able to shoot these trolls. But it's saying that their line of sight is blocked. I move behind here. Our Kaon is healing. And we're only getting some of our shots in on him. Oh, 
Okay, we are doing damage to Archaeon, though. He is definitely taking damage. Let's pop another Death Frost on him. We want to continue that damage. He's been busied with infantry at the moment. Hopefully you all understand now my reasoning. Why did my Ice Guards end up in a... They ended up with a melee order there. Now you know why I did what I did against Archaeon. I, I let him keep himself busy with a rather unimportant infantry unit. And essentially now that allowed me to gun him down with my sleds. And then the rest of his army is going to fall as a result here too. The brawler... Okay, Archaeon just went down. So we did take some damage. More than I would have liked. But again, not the end of the world. Let's cut down these units on the way out, and then there's just these few. Uh, let's turn around a couple of my sleds. I think there was a chaos spawn we were still waiting on there. I'm going to try and... I don't know why the brawlers didn't shoot there. I guess they don't have line of sight. That's frustrating. There, they got a shot off right at the last second. I'm going to slow this unit up. Play a little catch up here. Then we're going to cut down the rest of that mirror guard. And I'm going to take a couple of sleds back here and murder these trolls. Again, just idea being that I cause maximum damage to Archaeon. And so, revenge is a dish best served cold. And it gets served cold anytime Zarina Katarin is the one administering. So, our success here. I'm going to go ahead and take the little bit of replenishment. Uh, the cash is tempting, but I'm going to take the replenishment because we now have a stupid plague. I'm going to move back into our own territory where we should begin... We're punishing at a, at a very rapid clip here. Um, there's, I don't, I might force march just to get further away from the Skaven. Just to make darn sure that we stay away from them. Okay, we did not end up with the plague actually, which is good. Our replenishment will be swift and hopefully we're close enough to Prague to ward off any follow-up attacks there, though we may not be. We will see. Um, Boris's army is coming along nicely and it is going to be a very potent army indeed. Uh, though his Frost Maiden will have a lot of work to do in order to be uh, completely ready. Because we had already leveled up the other one, so let's go ahead and recruit her, which does start at rank 7, which is better than nothing. Alright, so we're going to do some scouting on Boris's army, and at rank 7, we do not have the War Horse that comes at rank 8. We can put a point into scouting, Kiss, Ice Sheet, Death Frost. And we'll just kind of put that second one in the ice sheet. So there we go. So we, we got a ways to go to get that Frost Maiden built back up. But again, at least it's a good start. And then Mother Astankia did not pick up Nakari on that turn end, unfortunately. So I'm going to go ahead and start pushing this direction. And now we should be in a good position to strike out further against our enemies. So, hope you all enjoyed this one. Air of Carthage, signing out for now. I will see you all soon with some more action in Total War Warhammer 3.